Hello, my name is Bertrand Tate. I'm a historian of humanitarianism, and I'm really glad to introduce one of the first deposits to the Humanitarian Archive. And this first deposit is of an exceptional but ordinary woman, Elizabeth Wilson. Elizabeth Wilson was uh, born in 1909 in the south, in Richmond, and lived most of her life in Huddersfield in a neighborhood called Far Town, which she identified as her home and for which she actually contributed a great deal of social work. Now, why this particular deposit is of significance and is rather unique is because it documents in great depth a very ordinary woman who did extraordinary things. Ordinary in the sense that she never sought um, fame or um, international public recognition, even though her activism was of incredible scope and width. So Elizabeth is important to the history of humanitarianism in the United Kingdom on several grounds, one of which is that she set up one of Oxfam's um, rival or co uh, partner organization, HUDFAM. The papers of HUDFAM are to be found in the Kirkley's archives. And the second aspect is that throughout her life, she developed a very important um, relationship with a range of charities and a range of organizations around the world. She explored a number of locations and she left behind a visual archive of hundreds of slides. I'll come back to those in a minute. But why do we care about Elizabeth Wilson? She actually um, entered, if you want, the international humanitarianism uh, fairly early on, in the sense that she took on refugees during the, the Second World War at home. She started working with prisoners of war. She was herself um, a, a, a conscience objector and um, a Quaker uh, later in life. She in, got involved in setting up her fam in response to the famine in Bengal in 1942. And she then started working on a range of initiatives which culminated with her starting to get involved more widely from 1960 onwards by traveling abroad and visiting the places where humanitarian work was done. She left behind an exceptionally rich archive of those journeys abroad. And these journeys abroad included, for example, a visit to Vietnam in 1973, um, a visit to Lebanon in 1975, and pay attention to the dates because, of course, Lebanon in 1975 is on the brink of civil war. She traveled to um, India repeatedly. Her son, Johnny, was actually working in the Hilgiri Hill and uh, doing some humanitarian work there. And so we have her journals, we have her diaries. We also have a very considerable um, um, filmed output, so the, 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 the slides, and the slides are in the diaries. This is how we identified that they existed in the first place. But we also have something extremely rare, which is um, journals that actually include engagement with their own dreams engagement with her very private life. She left at the very end of her life, when she had already lost her sight, she left uh, two um, memoirs, conversations with friends, if you prefer, called Encounters Along the Way, and further Encounters Along the Way, one published, the other one unpublished. But she also um, left behind the notes she took um, of her dreams, of her aspirations, and her dreams uh, she analyzed using um, psychoanalysis in particular, and um, the work of Carl Jung, trying to embrace, if you want, the universal. So this archive is extremely rich because it contains a lot of work that relates to uh, engagement with the wider community, engagement with Oxfam, uh, engagement with the pacifist movement, indeed uh, arrest for demonstration, demonstrating against um, nuclear submarines, um, a further engagement with the pacifist movement in 1968 when she went with a group of pacifists to the border of the Vietnam War, trying to stop the Vietnam War by uh, pacifist, uh, if you want, um, uh, shielding. Now, 
She was also uh, involved in, with Quaker organizations in 1968 who were trying to bring relief to North Vietnam, and notably the Phoenix of Hiroshima, based in Hong Kong. All of this took place while she remained, for all intents and purposes, a middle-class woman in a domesticity in Huddersfield. And the correlation or the link between the work she did at home, the fundraising she did at home, the, the very small fundraising, like for example a coffee evening and bring and buy, um, which was in aid of the clinic in South India, uh, cost 40p for the entrance. Elizabeth Wilson is widely credited to be one um, of the first um, originators of the fair trade movement in the United Kingdom. And this took place almost by accident. She uh, started getting in contact with refugee organizations in Hong Kong in 1960 and brought about um, the trading of objects produced by um, refugees. And those refugees were Chinese refugees in Hong Kong. And they produced things such as this uh, coffee cozy. There's a tea cozy as well in the archive, um, which were um, clearly identified as being produced on behalf of the Lutheran um, Church uh, Refugee Committee in, uh, and Federation in, in Hong Kong, and were retailed in the United Kingdom through um, a catalog, a mail order catalog. Now, this initiative in itself seems fairly modest, and it is very much like much of what um, Elizabeth Wilson did. It is a modest enterprise, but it is one of the forerunners of uh, the Oxfam direct um, trading uh, branch, which is now dominating our, our main streets. So it's, it is significant in its reach, significant in its intention. Now, as I mentioned before, um, Elizabeth Wilson entered an international career late in life. She was 51 when she first traveled abroad for the purpose of humanitarian work. And that, um, that gave her a lot of maturity in her approach, and she developed a photographic um, documentation which went along their travels, which went along the diaries that we've looked at. Now those images were produced uh, very systematically and very well. She's actually a good photographer with a keen sense of lighting and a very uh, acute sense of observation. She's actually very good at picking up scenes and engaging with the scenes. Now why did she actually take so many photographs? We have several um, hundreds, in fact more than a thousand photographs. Um, largely because these photographs were then instrumental in a representation of her work back at Huddersfield and in the north of England in general. Um, she produced, if you want, slideshows such as this one, which contain a range of images which follow the narrative arc, which often mirrors some of her journalism that she produced for uh, the Huddersfield uh, Daily Examiner, and which actually engage with the subjects of humanitarian work as well as their culture. Now these images were then circulated in talks, talks in schools, talks to women's institute, CND meetings, Quaker meetings, a range of networks with which Elizabeth Wilson maintained uh, activities until extremely late in life. She died in 91 but she was active until the year before. So we have somebody who has actually a, a, a pedagogical project at the heart of a photographic endeavor. And this pedagogical project means that the, the pictures are actually connected with each other and they are of great significance. So some of these images are um, documenting a first travel abroad. And a first travel abroad was in 1960. It is this particular box. And it documents a major earthquake in Agadir at the Moroccan border. Now, it's interesting on several grounds. The first, the first ground is, of course, that Agadir is a major disa natural disaster, if you wish. But it's on the border of a country experiencing a very vicious war, the Algerian War of Independence. And Elizabeth Wilson will actually document the humanitarian work taking place in Agadir. She will take uh, images that represent, for example, uh, the charitable work done in Agadir, the, the, orf the orphanages, the Catholic and Quaker orphanages of Agadir. She will actually bring back images of um, 
uh, of children wearing donated clothes by the people of Huddersfield, so she actually could actually relate the, people, the, the donors to the gift. She's very uh, insistent on those images. They have, many of them are very moving and, if in retrospect, a little distressing. Um, but she also goes to the border with France, as was, the, the Franco-Moroccan border of Algeria, and looks at the conflict from a distance. She starts to document the war that she cannot really observe directly, but she can insist on its existence and she can show that these refugees are now in Morocco fleeing um, the French war. This is something we find again later on in life when she goes to Cambodia. She cannot go into Vietnam, she cannot witness the Vietnam War, but she can witness the secret war that the Americans fight in Cambodia. She can document the use of napalm against Cambodian people. She can document um, the bombing of villages at the Cambodian-Vietnamese border, the so-called Ho Chi Minh Trail um, campaign, which at that stage the United States in 1968 were denying conducting. So Elizabeth Wilson left an extraordinarily rich archive, a very diverse archive, a very personal archive. And that makes this particular deposit exceptional. This Elizabeth Wilson deposit, the first deposit in the Humanitarian Archive at the University of Manchester, is a remarkable deposit on several grounds, but the first and most significant feature is the ordinariness of an exceptional human being, someone who actually got involved throughout her life in a locality with immigrants, with refugees, with the local schooling system, with religious education in school in her area, with a range of causes that were close to her heart, including, interestingly, the ecological causes. So Elizabeth Wilson remained exceptional in her locality, but hardly known abroad. Um, she traveled abroad in order to bring and bridge the difference between the locality and the international. She's a genuine internationalist and we have through our papers, through our images, uh, a record which I think is not matched anywhere else in the country. She represents and is undoubtedly one of the most significant um, humanitarians but a normal woman in the 1960s, 70s and 80s and the period during which she actually uh, charted and um, developed a humanitarian perspective on the world.